All right, joining me now is DraftKings contributor Gary and Thorne, or college football expert Gary and Thorne. You just drew up a nice little NFL draft, a mock draft here, because this is the eve of the NFL draft. So let's rip through some of why you placed dudes where you placed the dudes. So like the rest of America here, man, you got Trevor Lawrence, smart man, and Zach Wilson going one and two overall. Uh, It would truly be shocking, really, if those guys did not go one and two overall. Number three is where all the drama starts. I think that's the case for a lot of people's mock drafts. Like no one really knows where the 49ers are leaning, uh, except for we all expect it to be maybe a quarterback, possibly. Steve Buchanan had Justin Fields. It's kind of shocking going here. Yeah, uh, but you went Bama's Mac Jones. Why is that? Yeah, I think if you went solely on talent, I would agree with Steve. Um, I mean, I think a lot of people who have just watched Justin Fields accept the fact that he is someone who probably deserves to go in the top three picks, maybe even the top two picks. Uh, but for whatever reason, his stock is falling, and it seems like people, you know, NFL insiders who have kind of made their made made their reputation on being close to Kyle Shanahan and knowing what Kyle Shanahan is thinking, they've been connecting him to Mac Jones for a very long time now. And it almost seems like they have it down to two quarterbacks and it's Trey Lance and it's Mac Jones. Justin Fields isn't even in the debate at this point. At least that's what the later supports have. So at a certain point, I think when you just consistently hear it over and over and over again, I know there's a lot of worry about like smoke screens and, you know, teams trying to get other teams sniffing in the wrong direction, et cetera, et cetera. But for me, it's, it's just been too much news, too much smoke about Mac Jones going to San Francisco. And Hey, if the best this guy can be is a really good system quarterback in the NFL, the best system you could choose would be a Kyle Shanahan system. So I can see why maybe it's a match made in heaven, even if I do think there are more talented quarterbacks on the board. Well, speaking of Kyle, Gary, and Kyle Pitts to Atlanta, that buzz has picked up steam, especially with news that the Falcons will listen to offers on Julio Jones. So why do you think Pitts works here instead of Atlanta making it four straight quarterbacks? It just seems like with what they're trying to do, and maybe this is a little different now that Julio could possibly be on the move, but it almost seems like they want to take one more crack at this. And I know they're in salary cap hell. They've really got to figure out some stuff with some of those veteran deals. But this offense has the potential to be scary, uh, especially if they hang on to Julio and add someone like Kyle Pitts uh, and Calvin Ridley is still there. And look, Matt Ryan, you know, he's older, obviously but someone who can still play at least at a competent or an above average level, maybe you give him these types of weapons and he becomes not quite the MVP version of himself, but something close to that. Um, I, I do think it's important to remember that there might not have been a team more unlucky or a team that was more snake bitten in the fourth quarter last season than the Falcons. They only finished with four wins but their Pythagorean record had them at seven and a half wins. So I think they're in a spot where, especially with how Matt Ryan's contract works out the next couple of years, they might as well keep trying to make the playoffs. And if you add someone like Pitts and you create like a top five NFL offense or something that has the potential to be a top five NFL offense, maybe you can be a team that kind of slides into the wild card if you have some positive regression uh, in 2021. Dude, I saw that George Kettle wants the 49ers to take pets at three overall. Wow. I mean, that would yeah. be that'd be fun. Uh, It'd be unbelievable. It says he wants yeah. to see him spread out. Two, he wants two running backs. He wants two tight ends. Says just run it down their throat. I could see. But, I mean, look, Shanahan could do something crazy, uh, but I don't think right? he'd trade up that much capital to get a tight end. I, I, I will say that. Yeah. Here's hoping that they know what they were doing when they decided to trade up two, three overall. But, hey, you know, he doesn't know if any of us will be alive on Sunday, which he's not wrong. That is true. (laughs) You know, Uh, let's go uh, to your guys here. The Miami Dolphins at uh, number six. You got him snagging LSU wide receiver Jamar Chase. So you think Chase's talent here, like, supersedes the urge to pair two with one of his favorite targets at Bama, Jalen Waddell? Like, wouldn't you want that duo, like, connection? Um, I mean, maybe three months ago, it was a really nice narrative. Uh, I can't remember Waddle's exact answer, but I know they were asking a lot of the Alabama receivers like, hey, 
maybe you can't answer this, but like Tua or Mac, and they were all like Mac very quickly. So it's possible that the uh, the connection, the Alabama connection, the good vibes, uh, maybe not as good. Uh, I, I think Miami, you know, we, t- we just talked about that San Francisco trade, the amount of capital they traded up to switch uh, with Miami and get that number three pick. And then Miami goes and trades with Philadelphia and, and, and moves back up to six. It seems like the reason they were so desperate to get back up to six was that they knew with how the board was playing out, three quarterbacks were going in the first three picks. And there are, you know, depending on who you talk to, three quote unquote generational talents at the skill positions you've got, or if we want to consider offensive tackle a skill position, which we probably should at this point. Um, so they wanted one of those three guys. And it seems like Pitts isn't going to be an option. I don't think he's going to make it to six. So depending on what the Bengals do, if they want to pair Chase with Burrow, I know that's a big narrative too. I think the Dolphins are more than happy to just take Sewell and, and bolster an offensive line that was also very bad last season. There's also the chance that they trade down. I know there are reports uh, coming out of camp today that while the Dolphins might not trade down to like New England's got 15, Washington has 19, Chicago has 20, all teams that might want to trade up for a quarterback, they don't want to go that far down the board. They want a number one offensive weapon for Tua, but maybe that nine pick, maybe Denver would want to move up and try to snag a quarterback that's been falling. So Cincinnati and Miami, that's really like the linchpin of this first round. Like they're going to dictate so much of what else happens in this draft. Uh, But I do think all things being equal, if the Dolphins are picking sixth and Chase is on the board, they're going to take Chase. And that was uh, Waddle and Heisman winner Devontae Smith picking Mac Jones over Tua as their favorite quarterbacks. Um, At number nine. Yeah, right. Super (laughs) awesome. And super awkward, yes. At number nine, you have another quarterback going. This time, Trey Lance of North Dakota State to the Broncos. So that obviously means here, Gare Bear, that Justin Fields, in your eyes, did not make your top ten. So how far do you think and how far do you expect Fields to fall then? I mean, if we work under the framework that no one makes a trade, which I think is pretty unlikely, um, he could obviously fall as far as 15. And I think Patriots fans would be incredibly happy if that scenario were to play. Yeah, because there were some reports, too, that they've been, like, kind of flirting a little bit with the Panthers there at eight to get up and potentially take fields. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, when I say he's not a top ten pick, I think this mock, I I underwent it and said, I'm not going to guess at any trades. We'll just make the picks that could possibly happen if these teams keep their selections. Okay. I think there's going to be a trade. I mean, there's just so many teams that are desperate for some sort of quarterback play. Um, you know, whether it's the Patriots, whether it's the Bears, uh, you know, whether it's Washington, um, there's just a lot of teams that seem like they need to take one of these guys. And there's a surplus of quarterbacks. And there's also a bunch of teams who it doesn't really seem like they want to pick where they are currently picking. Uh, The Dolphins, as I mentioned, they probably want a skill position player, but they don't need to pick at six. The Lions have so many needs that I'm sure they would be very happy to move down and acquire more draft capital. Uh, the Panthers, I mean, it, it's a weird spot. I wouldn't say that Sam Darnold is like a long-term fix, but you brought the guy in, you gave something up real for him. He's going to be the starting quarterback this year in Carolina. So maybe they want to move down and acquire some more capital. So there's a lot of opportunities for teams to trade up and take Justin Fields. And I do think someone will, and I do think he'll actually end up being a top 10 pick. 